Diablo 2 Resurrected has been a great success to some, while others say it was an abject failure. And for the most part, they're both right, at least as long as you trim off the people that ride Poe's Law like the teacups at Disneyland. The reality is, Diablo 2's remaster falls into the same problem that a large number of remasters, remakes, and even reboots do. And that is rather than just fighting against the hype like a new release, they're fighting against hype and nostalgia, which can create quite the rough environment. So today I want to look at how Resurrected failed and succeeded in its first six months, and what it can and cannot be fixed. As we all know, if Blizzard's reports are accurate, Resurrected was a financial success, so that would be a bit of low-hanging fruit to use as the sole indicator of success or failure, since it's actually not hard to have a bad game be financially successful and a great game bleed money. The better way to look at it is whether the game delivered on its promises and whether it gave players a satisfying experience. Obviously, the elephant in the room in that regard is console, where most of the consensus seems to be that the game is mediocre at best and a train wreck at worst, depending on whether you play multiplayer and what types of builds you prefer using. This is because several quality of life aspects we take for granted on PC are missing, from things everyone would interact with, such as not allowing keyboard and mouse on the platforms that could allow it, to things that only affect online players such as lack of custom lobbies or reliable communication methods with other players, this leading to primarily a disjointed and extremely different experience than you would get on PC. A really odd catch on the control front too is that, oddly enough, the original Diablo 1's controller scheme on the original PlayStation felt smoother than that of Diablo 2 Resurrected, but that required transformative changes to the game's mechanics which might be outside the scope the development team felt comfortable in or even what they were allowed to do, but it is definitely something that should be looked at, with potion organization and spell aiming being probably the two most notable aspects that just feel bad on controller. As far as the multiplayer though, that is a bit of a deeper quagmire. There is cross progression, meaning you can play online on PC and then move over to your Switch to play while you're on the train or such, giving you some freedom on where you play. The big but here though is that there isn't proper crossplay. This is actually something that can be impacted by forces beyond the developers, since getting Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo to agree to cross-platform play can be a bit of a struggle at best or impossible at worst, depending on the title and the company asking. So my hopes for this being fixed are a bit lower, but they could still happen, it's just a long shot. Both of these stack on top of performance issues on some of these platforms, with bad loading times and such, especially since loading screen deaths are still a thing from time to time, not just on console, but also on slower PC hardware as well. And while they said they solved it, it seems as if the loading screen protection only extends up to a certain amount of time, rather than up to when the player actually loads into the area. So overall, these console issues add up to a fairly big pile of failures for the game, and there really is no avoiding that aspect of it. And while some fixes, both to these major issues as well as some specific or minor bugs, could help bring it up, the console bridge is definitely weakened to a fairly significant point where it may not be redeemable. Unlike the console release, where overall it is a bit more of a failure state, the PC release is much more of a mixed bag, and is where most of the both sides have legitimate stances comes in. Especially since this is the platform that you have the vast majority of purists, modders, new players, and progressive veterans all butting heads constantly on. So it would be impossible to make them all happy, and a lot of the butting heads is caused by one of the more annoying flaws in the PC release, the check-in DRM. The check-in DRM requires that the game be able to check into the Battle.net servers approximately about once a month or so, and as a form of DRM protection. Obviously, this has already been cracked, so you can patch it out if you want to crawl through some of the shadier sides of the internet, but for your average user, the answer is pretty much going to be, if they don't like an update, they'll probably just stop playing, rather than looking for a new way to permanently stop the updates. Similarly, while the modding for D2R is still possible, it is far more restricted, and without a naturally supported method of creating and playing multiplayer mods with friends, you're seeing far more insular modding being the main path people are taking. This generally leads to more stacked modding, such as adding items, larger stashes, graphical changes, etc., as opposed to full conversion mods built around multiplayer economies such as Media and XL and Project Diablo 2, which bring new co-op and PvP opportunities to the formula, extending the life of the game for many veteran players. 
A solution to this, since there are legitimate concerns over the older methods of multiplayer connectivity, would be for Blizzard to introduce a connection system more in line with Steam's multiplayer tools, where players can invite others to their locally hosted modded servers and could even be used as multiplayer alternatives for Vanilla Resurrected with your single player characters. This wouldn't be a perfect solution, but would be orders of magnitude better than the current insular system that doesn't allow for multiplayer modding. Now, we've gone through some fairly heavy lists of negatives so far, but it does turn around since Diablo 2 Resurrected does bring a lot of positive to the table. Among them, a plethora of quality of life changes that were seriously needed in Lord of Destruction, and required the use of composite mods to achieve, or some of them even really too difficult to achieve in Lord of Destruction. Whether it's something simple like gold pickup or more stash, which was a common thing, or something a bit more complex like quick keys or controller support, they're definitely welcome improvements for the quality of life of playing the game. And the biggest plus for me, and an example of diverging wish lists since it is actually something that is a big negative for purists, I'm happy that they're addressing skill imbalances, and while power creep is a bit of a concern, as are PvP balance concerns, the fact is having more viable playstyles in the A and B tier without top tier equipment is definitely a welcome change for people who enjoy solo self found or single playstyles. And seeing some of the I wish it was good builds finally get some love, even if they won't be meta, is so welcome too. And with the incoming patch 2.4 and soon after that the latter, a lot of the early wish list check marks are being checked, even if it's several months late. So I would say that for the most part, they did deliver on their promise, and as long as Lord of Destruction remains operational, the ability to go back to the old modes will still exist. Not to mention a lot of the more popular mods, which will still exist even if Lord of Destruction servers go down because they host their own. Overall, I think with the graphical improvements, continued development, and quality of life improvement, Diablo 2 Resurrected on PC was an overall success from a design standpoint. It may not fulfill all the wishes, and it isn't quite as good for PvP or modding, and it's not really designed for the purists. But taken in and of itself, it is a solid game that does well, that takes what most people enjoyed about Lord of Destruction and brings it forward in a modern shell, along with evolutions to its balance and design that are long overdue. The big failure, and yes, it is a definite failure, from a design and operability standpoint was console. And of course, not being able to fulfill the impossible, which is satisfying so many divergent wishlists. No game can do that, and screeching about it won't make it any better or change how future games are developed. And the best way to look at Resurrected is how many of us looked at Lord of Destruction in the day as a game that brings new features, updates, and balance changes to the formula we already enjoyed. Is it worth the hefty price tag though? That's for you to decide. But for me, it has made its value. And while I don't agree with every change, I can say I do approve with the direction it's taking and the fact that they are working to try to improve the game that we all love.